Welcome to GMAT Math Online from Whitman Random. In this video, we're going to talk about the data sufficiency or DS questions of the GMAT exam. Since this kind of question is very different from normal math problems, it's worthwhile to learn how they're structured. Let's get right into it. First, we'll give you an introduction to the concept of DS questions and then we'll look at a number of examples. With DS, there's the question and the problem. Each DS question focuses on a specific math problem. Notice that we're distinguishing between a question, which you're supposed to answer, and the problem that the question is concerned with. In a DS question, you're not asked to solve the math problem, but merely to decide whether the information given is sufficient to solve the problem. So DS questions measure your ability to determine whether the information given in two supplemental statements is sufficient for solving the problem. The format of every DS question is the same. First, there's the general statement of the math problem. For example, here's a problem. A car drives a 30-mile stretch up a mountain, over the mountain's pass, and down the other side. What was its average speed in completing this portion of its trip? As you can see, this statement tells you the problem you would need to solve if you were to actually solve it, but it gives you practically none of the information you need to do so. So, two statements, numbered 1 and 2, follow this general statement, and each of these statements gives you some additional information about the problem. Here are two dummy statements. If they were meaningful, they would provide additional information. In the examples, we'll provide meaningful statements for this problem. Your job is to determine for each of the statements 1 and 2 whether it gives sufficient information to solve the problem. That is, does statement 1 all by itself give enough information? And also, does statement 2, all by itself, without any reference to the information in statement 1, give enough information? The answer to the DS question depends on whether either, or both, or neither of these statements is sufficient. If neither statement is, then you need to determine whether the two together give sufficient information. After you've done that, you then choose the correct answer to the DS question from the following set of answers, identified by A through E. A. The first statement alone is sufficient, but the second statement is not. B. The first statement alone is not sufficient, but the second statement is. C. Neither statement alone is sufficient, but together they are sufficient. D. Each statement alone is sufficient. And E, neither statement is sufficient, and the two together are not sufficient. This set of answers is exactly the same for every DS question. You are always asked to evaluate each of the two statements for sufficiency, and then select the correct answer to the DS question according to your findings. This chart shows visually how each of these five answers is determined. In the first column, we see what the possible answers are if statement 1 is or is not sufficient. Notice that if statement 1 is sufficient, that is, the answer is yes, then the possible answers are D and A. And if it's not, the answer is no, then the possible answers are B, C, or E. These are the possible answers. We won't know the actual answer until we've examined statement 2. So we decide on the sufficiency of statement 2, and we look at the second column. If both statements are sufficient, we can see in column 2 that the answer is D. If the first is sufficient, but the second is not, column 2 tells us the answer is A. If the first is not, but the second is, then the answer is B. And if neither statement 1 nor statement 2 is sufficient, we go on to column 3. 
First, we consider the two statements together to answer the question, are they or are they not sufficient together? The third column shows the result. If the two statements do provide sufficient information when considered together, then the answer is C, and otherwise the answer is E. Here is a reduced version of the table, which we'll use as we go through the examples. As you can see, green means yes and red means no. All the examples we're going to give you now use the same general problem we gave above, but with differing additional statements. Example 1. A car drives a 30-mile stretch up a mountain, over the mountain's pass, and down the other side. What was its average speed in completing this portion of its trip? Now before we go into the additional statements, let's examine this general statement we just read. It tells us the distance traveled, 30 miles, and asks us to determine the average speed. But that's it. No more information than that. We know a little, the distance traveled, and we know what has to be determined, the average speed. So now let's see if we can determine what it is that we need to know from the additional statements. We have the formula distance equals rate times time, or distance divided by time equals rate. Rate is what we're interested in. That's the average speed. Since we already have the distance, all we need to know is the time traveled in order to calculate the average speed. So let's look for this, the time traveled, in the two statements. Statement 1. It took 40 minutes to drive the 30-mile stretch. Statement 2. The car averaged 40 miles per hour going up the mountain to the pass. Statement 1 tells us it took 40 minutes, or two-thirds hour, to travel the 30 miles. So statement 1 gives us the time traveled and is therefore sufficient. If we were to actually solve the problem, we would divide 30 by 2 thirds and get 45 miles per hour as the average speed. But we're not asked to solve the problem. We're only asked to decide whether the statement is sufficient to solve the problem. And statement 1 is. So we're through with statement 1. Now the natural tendency at this point is to think we're done. But we're not we still need to examine statement 2. If statement 2 is not sufficient, then the answer to the DS question is A. But if statement 2 is sufficient, then the answer is D. So statement 2 is vital to our success. Statement 2 tells us the average speed for part of the trip, the distance up to the pass. But in order to calculate the average that's required, we need the average for the entire trip, not just the average for one part of it. So statement 2 by itself is not sufficient. Remember, in evaluating statement 2, it's always essential to put the information from statement 1 completely out of our minds. Each statement has to be evaluated independently of the other statement, because we have to know for each statement whether it alone can solve the problem, without any help from the data of the other statement. Now we can answer the data sufficiency question. Statement 1 is sufficient, and Statement 2 is not, so the answer is A. One more point we need to note here before going on to Example 2. When the problem asks for a particular value, in this case the average speed, it means an exact value, a number. The data is not sufficient unless one and only one value can be calculated from it as the answer to the problem. In this example, we actually calculated the average speed as 45 miles per hour. If the information given would only result in a range of values, say 40 to 50 miles per hour, then that would not have been sufficient. When it asks for a value, then we must be able to calculate the exact value. Here's the next example again using the same general problem. Example 2. The car drives a 30-mile stretch up a mountain, and so forth. You see the general statement of the problem is the same, so we know that all we have to find in statements 1 and 2 is the time it took to travel the 30 miles. 
Statement 1. The car reached the pass after traveling 20 miles up the mountain. Statement 2. It took 40 minutes to drive the 30-mile stretch. In this case, Statement 1 is no help. It merely tells us that the distance from the start of the stretch to the mountain pass is 20 miles. Otherwise, it gives us nothing, neither the time it took nor the average speed for that stretch. So Statement 1 is not sufficient. Remember, we're not through until we examine Statement 2. At this point, there are three possible answers to the data sufficiency question, B, C, or E. These are the possible answers if Statement 1 is not sufficient. Now let's look at Statement 2. As you can see, Statement 2 is identical to Statement 1 from Example 1. Statement 2 gives the time traveled in the 30-mile stretch, and so it is sufficient to solve the problem. Now we can conclude. Statement 1 is not sufficient, and Statement 2 is, so the answer is B. Example 3. A car drives a 30-mile stretch up a mountain, blah, blah, blah. Statement 1. It took 40 minutes to drive the 30-mile stretch. Statement 2. The car averaged 40 miles per hour for the first 20 miles and 60 miles per hour for the remainder. Again, the general problem is the same, so we're looking in the additional statements for the time traveled. Statement 1 is identical to Statement 1 in Example 1 and to Statement 2 in Example 2. It gives us the time traveled, so it's sufficient. Statement 2, however, is different. It doesn't give us the time traveled, but it does give us the average speeds and distances for the two portions of the trip. From these, we can calculate the time for each part of the 30-mile stretch, and adding them together, we get the total time. So statement 2 is also sufficient. Now we can conclude. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are individually sufficient. So the answer is D. In these three examples, we've seen combinations of statements 1 and 2, resulting in answers A, B, and D. Now let's look at two more combinations that will result in answers C and E. These two answer types have in common that neither of their individual statements is by itself sufficient to solve the problem. However, for answer C, the two statements together are sufficient, while for answer E, the two statements together are not sufficient. <music> Example 4. A car drives a 30-mile stretch, etc., etc. Statement 1. The car averaged 40 miles per hour for the first 20 miles. Statement 2. The last one-third of the stretch took 10 minutes. Again, we're looking for the length of time it took to complete the entire trip. Statement 1 tells us the average speed for one part of the trip. From this, we can compute the length of time for that part, 30 minutes, but it gives us no information about the rest of the trip. So by itself, this statement is not sufficient. As with statement 1, statement 2 only gives us the driving time for a part of the trip. So it's also not sufficient. However, the two statements together are sufficient, because from statement 1, we can calculate the driving time for the first 20 miles. And from statement 2, we know the last 10 miles took 10 minutes. This gives us the total time for the 30 miles. Since the two statements together are sufficient, we conclude that the answer is C. Now let's look at the last example. Example 5. A car drives a 30-mile stretch, etc., etc. Statement 1. The car averaged 40 miles per hour going up the mountain to the pass. Statement 2. The car reached the pass after traveling 20 miles up the mountain. It's easy to see that alone and together, these statements are not sufficient to solve the problem, because both deal with the first 20 miles of the trip and say nothing about the last 10 miles.
We conclude then that the answer is E. In conclusion, let's review the concepts. First, each question is concerned with a math problem. For example, you are then given two additional statements. After evaluating the sufficiency of both statements, you select the correct answer from these five. A. The first statement alone is sufficient, but the second statement is not. B. The first statement alone is not sufficient, but the second statement is. C. Neither statement alone is sufficient, but together they are sufficient. D. Each statement alone is sufficient. E. Neither statement is sufficient, and the two together are not sufficient. If you want to become skillful at answering data sufficiency questions, you need to commit these five answers to memory so you can immediately know which of them is correct once you've identified the respective sufficiency of statements 1 and 2. We can help you develop your DS skills. To get more help with DS questions, please view our other videos and go to our website, GMAT Math Online. Thanks for your interest.